five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. I am Buzz Aldrin. One small step for man. One and I was the lunar module pilot on Apollo 11. We have a liftoff, 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Buzz Aldrin, one of the few men to have walked on the moon, possesses unique insights about it thanks to his experience as a lunar astronaut. Later in life, he shared intriguing observations, hinting at mysterious entities or phenomena close enough to be observed on the moon. Does Aldrin's observations challenge conventional knowledge about the moon? I thought it was a good idea in front of the TV to bounce around and to demonstrate how easy a guy could uh, move around or a gal could move around on, on the moon. Is the moon not what we think it is? Let's learn more about this person. Buzz Aldrin, an astronaut renowned for his academic prowess, including a PhD from MIT, played an instrumental role in the historic Apollo 11 mission as the lunar module pilot. As the pilot of the lunar module, Aldrin had a massive job. He had to land on the moon and then make sure they could get back to Earth safely. This guy wasn't just very intelligent. He was also a top fighter pilot in the Korean War. His mix of brain power and flying skills was key to the mission's success. But there's more. We're also looking at how Aldrin kept his cool under pressure. Imagine this, you're descending to the moon and you're hit with computer alarms, unknown boulders on the surface, and your fuel's running low. Sounds scary, right? Well, Aldrin, alongside Neil Armstrong, handled it like a pro. His ability to stay calm and make quick, smart decisions was crucial, especially during those tense moments. Thanks to him, the Eagle landed safely on the moon. Stay tuned as we explore the amazing journey of Buzz Aldrin on Apollo 11. The historic moon landing. Guess what? Buzz Aldrin was the second guy to walk on the moon right after Neil Armstrong. When he stepped onto the moon, he didn't just make history, he became a part of it. But walking on the moon was just one part of his mission. Aldrin was super busy up there, setting up all sorts of science experiments. These weren't just any experiments. They were designed to help us learn everything about the moon, like what it's made of and what its surface is like. Thanks to him, we know a lot more about the moon now. Aldrin also did something really important. He planted the American flag there. This wasn't just about being patriotic. It was a big moment showing what humans can achieve when we aim for the stars. And there's the special thing he did that not many people know about. While he was on the moon, Aldrin took some time for a personal spiritual moment. He actually took communion. It's a reminder that behind all the science and exploration, there's a human touch. Let's talk about how Aldrin described the moon. He called it magnificent desolation. What a way to describe it. It's like he was saying the moon is incredibly beautiful, but also really empty and quiet. It must have been such an unreal experience to stand there in this huge, silent place, so far from Earth. Space sickness experience. Let's dive into something that is about Buzz Aldrin that is not talked about much. His experience with space sickness during the Apollo 11 mission. You know, being an astronaut is not just about the cool stuff like floating in zero gravity or walking on the moon. There are some tough challenges too, and space sickness is definitely one of them. You can compare it with seasickness if you have ever had it before. Now, when Aldrin was up there in space, he actually got really sick. But here's the thing. Back then, nobody really talked about it. It wasn't until later, in his autobiography and some interviews, that Aldrin opened up about this experience. This was a big deal because it showed a side of astronauts we don't often see, their human, vulnerable side. Space sickness, or what they call motion sickness in space, can be pretty rough. Imagine feeling dizzy, nauseous, and just all around terrible while you're trying to do your job millions of miles away from Earth. It's not fun. Aldrin dealing with this while on such an important mission just shows how tough and resilient astronauts have to be. But why is this important? Well, it reminds us that astronauts are people too. They face challenges and have to overcome them just like the rest of us. Aldrin sharing his story of space sickness helps us understand and appreciate the real, human side of space exploration. It's not always smooth sailing or smooth flying in this case. Theories on extraterrestrial life and moons far side. Now let's talk about something that's really out of this world. Buzz Aldrin has dropped some hints that have got everyone talking. He suggested that there might be hidden structures or even bases on the far side of the moon. 
This could mean something huge, like ancient civilizations or extraterrestrial activity. This idea isn't just some sci-fi fantasy. It's coming from a man who's actually walked on the moon. So, when Aldrin talks about these possibilities, people listen. His comments have sparked a ton of interest and loads of speculation, not just among space enthusiasts, but even in the scientific community. Now, think about it. The far side of the moon is this mysterious place that we've never seen from Earth. So, when someone like Aldrin hints at something hidden over there, it's no wonder everyone's imagination goes into hyperdrive. Could there be structures we've never seen before? Signs of ancient moon visitors? Maybe even evidence of aliens? These ideas have sent people rushing to look at lunar images and data, searching for any clues that might support Aldrin's suggestions. But here's the thing. While some people claim they've found evidence of weird structures or unnatural formations on the moon, a lot of it could be our brains playing tricks on us, seeing patterns that aren't really there. That said, the fact that a seasoned astronaut like Aldrin even entertains these ideas adds a serious dose of intrigue to the whole discussion. Observation of a mysterious object in space during the historic Apollo 11 mission, Aldrin reported something extraordinary. He observed an object in space that he couldn't identify. This wasn't just a piece of their spacecraft or some random space junk. It was something different, something that even a seasoned astronaut like Aldrin couldn't recognize. Now, imagine this. You're thousands of miles away from Earth in the vast emptiness of space, and you see something mysterious floating out there. That's exactly what happened to Aldrin. This wasn't a quick glimpse either. He saw an object that seemed to move in a controlled way, not just tumbling through space like Debris. This sighting was unusual enough to catch the attention of the entire crew. This sighting sparked a lot of conversations and theories, especially about the possibility of extraterrestrial life. It's one of those incidents that make you wonder what's really out there. Was it an optical illusion, a reflection, or something more? Some space enthusiasts even dared to ask if it could be evidence of intelligent life taking an interest in humanity's first journey to the moon. Aldrin has been open about this experience, discussing it in interviews and being transparent about what he saw and felt. He didn't jump to any wild conclusions, but he also didn't dismiss what he saw as nothing. This account from Apollo 11 adds a layer of mystery and excitement to the mission's story. Belief in extraterrestrial life. Aldrin has some other fascinating thoughts about life beyond Earth. Think about it. The universe is incredibly huge, with billions of galaxies, each filled with billions of stars. Around those stars orbit countless planets. Aldrin thinks that in all that immense space, it's almost more unlikely that Earth is the only place with life. He's not just dreaming big. He's basing his ideas on the probabilities given the size of the cosmos. But Aldrin doesn't stop at just believing there's life out there. He's a big advocate for continuing to explore space, to push further into the unknown. Why? because he thinks that by exploring, we might actually find other life forms. Imagine the breakthroughs and the leaps in understanding we could achieve if we encountered life beyond Earth. Aldrin's perspective is really a call to action for humanity. He's urging us to keep exploring space, not just to satisfy our curiosity, but also to connect with potential life out there. This isn't just about launching rockets and satellites. It's about a deeper understanding of our place in the universe. Life on the moon, possibilities and challenges. Now when we think of the moon, we usually picture this barren, desolate landscape with extreme conditions. It's a place with no atmosphere, extreme temperature swings, and bombarded by cosmic rays and solar winds. Not exactly the kind of spot you'd think life would call home, right? But there's more to this story. It's this wild idea that life can actually hitch a ride across the cosmos, potentially even reaching the moon. This could happen through asteroids, comets, or even interstellar dust. Imagine tiny life forms or organic materials getting a lift from Earth or other planets and ending up on the moon. But that's not the only way life could make it to the moon. Human activity could also play a part. We've been sending spacecraft and landers to the moon since the 1950s. Now, what if some of these missions accidentally carried microscopic stowaways? It's entirely possible. In 2019, an Israeli spacecraft called Bereshit crashed on the moon, but it wasn't alone. It had a payload that included thousands of tardigrades. If you don't know what tardigrades are, they're these tiny, tough animals that can survive extreme conditions. We're talking about surviving in space, so there's a chance these little guys could be living it up on the moon right now. Now, we're not saying there's a thriving ecosystem up there. If there's any life on the moon, it's probably super simple, like bacteria or fungi. 
and it would have to be in very isolated spots, like inside rocks or in ice at the poles. While it's unlikely that the moon has its own native life forms, the idea that life could hitch a ride that isn't so far-fetched. It's these kinds of possibilities that make space exploration so exciting. We're constantly learning and re-evaluating our understanding of life in the cosmos. What do you think? Do you believe in Buzz Aldrin's observations? Could it possibly be any life beyond our planet, or even on our neighbor the moon? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. We hope you found these facts intriguing. If you heard them before or have any thoughts to share, please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to A World to Discover to join us on our journey of discovery.